What's up my friends, my name is Jason Morris and today I'm going to talk about the reasons why I switched from Nikon to Sony and I'm going to dive a little bit more into it because I've had the Sony a7 III for a couple of weeks now and I've really had a good chance to see the differences between my D750 and the Sony a7 III. So if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you've already done so and seen my videos before, then a very big welcome back and I hope you enjoy this video. This isn't a subjective statement here, but the Sony has much better autofocusing system than the Nikon in video. Now I'm recording on the D750 here and the Sony a7 III side to side, and you're going to actually see the differences between autofocusing system in this video. So for photography, the eye autofocus system is absolutely fantastic and extremely accurate on the Sony a7 III. For video, the Sony is far superior in autofocusing to the Nikon, and this is just a pure fact. But I absolutely love my Nikon, they're just not up with the game when it comes to video autofocus. But when you need manual focus, this will change your outcome. So it purely depends on what you're shooting and what your shooting style is like. Now I'm gonna have to break this down into two sections, manual focus and autofocus. On many professional film projects, it's common to use manual focus only as this gives you 100% control of where you wanna focus. The difficult thing is catching perfect focus on your subject while having a wide aperture. But this is where the focus peaking will help in manual focusing. Autofocus is incredible feature on DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, and some cameras obviously tend to do autofocus better than others, but there isn't one perfect camera for everyone. As many of you watching this video will have different interests in what you photograph or film. And also it comes down to that one big point, which happens to be budget. Now we would all have the best gear if we could afford it, right? but we all don't have deep pockets and the desire to shoot with the best gear. The best gear doesn't necessarily make you the best photographer or cinematographer anyway. So owning a D750 for a few years and in the Nikon system for a fair few years as well, I got used to the focusing system and also the quality full frame Nikon glass with photography. But when it came to video recording, I manually focused everything as this gave me more control over how I wanted to rack focus on a particular subject. I quickly realized that autofocus in video mode just wasn't an option for the D750, as it would focus hunt and struggle to hit focus, especially if the subject has moved. I ended up purchasing a Canvay camera cage, as you can see here. This also comes with a manual focusing racking system, but it's worked a, worked a treat with my corporate videos with the D750, because um, like I said, you get to choose where you are focusing on and what you wanna rack focus on. So when filming my new YouTube videos, uh, this became a little bit more difficult as I'd have to set up my trusty little model Dwayne Johnson dummy here um, as to where I'm sitting and uh, focus on him manually. So then I would uh, obviously sit in his place and then voila, there you have it. So I didn't really put it on the autofocus system that I've got it on now because it tends to focus hunt, which I'm obviously not a fan of. Now having owned the Sony a7 III for a couple of weeks now, I began to realize the importance of the 693 phase detection autofocus points, as this is an incredible feature when it comes to filming and keeping the subject in focus. The autofocus system is much more smooth and allows me to keep it on autofocus continuous the whole time. Fortunately, with the Sony a7 III, there is little to no dilemma when you are being artistic and very critical on where you are focusing on. Autofocus can be very handy with the touchscreen. So for instance, if I focus on a subject in like nice and close and I type the focus on here and then I brought the focus back to the subject, it will gather focus quite quickly, whereas the Nikon will really struggle to rack focus. A good autofocus system is very handy for people who use Steadicams and gimbals because it's nearly impossible to manual focus with Steadicams and gimbals as they're pretty much designed for holding single hand or dual hand. So you're not exactly gonna hold a gimbal and manually focus like this. So if you do prefer Steadicams and gimbals, then obviously a good autofocusing system would be best for you. So the one thing that Sony does very well when it comes to autofocus 
is the eye autofocus. So it literally puts a box in your subject's eye and tracks it as it moves. It is incredibly accurate and a damn good option when shooting weddings or portraits as you'll almost always keep the subject in focus. Nikon doesn't have that focusing system, but the focus tracking in the Nikon systems for photography still is incredible and extremely accurate. And definitely one of the best in the higher professional DSLR ranges. So you're looking at you like your D850 or D4 or D5, whichever one you go for in the professional range. So in conclusion, I am very glad I made the switch to the Sony a7 III. If Nikon did come out with a very similar product, I definitely probably would have went straight for that. Um, but unfortunately, Nikon just isn't up with Sony or some of the other mirrorless brands at the moment. But there is talks that there will be a, uh, a Nikon mirrorless camera coming out soon. But you know, unfortunately, I'm switching it now anyway. And, um, but I'll still be keeping my uh, D750, um, but I'll be using the A7 III as well. Now, as I've said many times before, it's really hard to tell someone to buy a specific camera. Um, if you don't know how or what they shoot with photo or video, it's pretty, it's, it's impossible to tell someone this camera is the best for you. The biggest thing is you need to understand that everyone has individual abilities and everyone has individual needs when it comes to you know this kind of art. There are many pros and cons, um, subjectively and objectively, uh, with different camera brands. Obviously, there's been a lot of flack at the moment with a couple of high-profile people on YouTube flacking the Sony a7 III and even the whole Sony brand, um, and vice versa. So just be aware of that. Choose the camera that you feel is best for your shooting style, um, which is what I've done here and what I've tried to explain the difference between the D750 and the A7 III. So that's what's up guys. Please like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you already haven't. Comment below if you have some thoughts on the Sony A7 III or the D750. I'll be making videos on both still. But there'll be more Sony videos coming right up. Watch out for my next video, guys. I'll see you next time.